Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to, again, not ignore one additional factor. In the previous one, we didn't ignore wind resistance. We included it and we noticed there was a lot of additional power we needed in the car to drive up the hill to not only fight the, uh, the change in potential energy, but to also overcome the wind resistance. Now we're going to talk about the rolling friction. There's friction between the tires and the road, and there's friction in the compression of the tire called rolling friction. So when we include that, now we're going to need additional power. Now it turns out it's not as much power as we need for overcome wind resistance, and it turns out that the change in the rolling friction is not so much dependent on the velocity. There's a slight increase, as you can see, as you go faster. So this would be the uh, force due to the rolling friction. And yes, it does increase a little bit as you go faster, but not quite the same as for the wind resistance. And you can see that at high velocities, the rolling friction does not nearly play as big a role as the wind resistance. So it is about the force would be about 50 newtons, or let's see here, yeah, that's about 50 newtons of force, so it's about, uh, let's say, about 10 pounds of force or so that we have to overcome, and it also depends upon how well your tires are inflated. If you have very high pressure tires, that rolling friction goes way down, and if you have underinflated tires, that rolling friction goes up, and so you'll have to have more power to overcome that additional rolling friction. So we can say here that uh, Definition of our power is equal to the work divided by time, and work is equal to force times distance divided by time, and distance divided by time is equal to velocity, so it's the force times velocity. So in this case, the power for the rolling friction, RF, or rolling friction, is equal to the force, 50 newtons, times the velocity of 26.817 meters per second. And you can see that that, let's see, so we have 50, whoop, 50 times 26.817. That's an additional 1,341 watts, 1,341 watts. And if we then multiply that times one horsepower divided by 746 watts, we can then express that in terms of horsepower and it will be about 1.8 horsepower. So now, the total power needed to not only drive up the hill, to overcome wind resistance, to overcome friction, so now we can say power total, which is equal to power to overcome the hill, plus the power for the wind, plus the power for the rolling friction. Now that becomes equal to 42.4 horsepower to get up the hill, plus an additional 25.2 horsepower to overcome wind resistance, plus an additional 1.8 horsepower to overcome the rolling friction. That makes that 27. That would be 60.9.2. Oops, 60, not 40. 69.2 horsepower required to now get up the hill, overcome the wind and overcome the rolling friction. But that's not the big part. The big part is engine efficiency. And so we realize that if an if a engine puts out 100 horsepower, it doesn't mean that all 100 horsepower are available to do what you need to do. Only a fraction of that, which changes things quite a bit. So in the next video, we're also going to take into account the engine efficiency, and then you realize why some cars have trouble getting up that hill. And we'll show you how that's done.